our prophetic theme for this year, this year, one of them is rebuilding. Everybody say rebuilding. Okay. The Lord promised that he will rebuild, not just the church and uh, our lives. I'd like you to turn with me to the prophetic word of, 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 for 2023, Jeremiah 31 and verse 4. Jeremiah 31 and verse 4. While you're reading the scripture, uh, you should ask yourself this question, where do you need the Lord to rebuild you? Where do you need God to rebuild you? Is it your career? Is it your family? Is it your finances? Is it your spiritual life? Okay, where do you need God to rebuild you? Okay, let me read. Again, I will build. Again, I will build you. Again. The word again means that we have either stagnated or maybe we have fallen. Fallen. Okay. Again, I will build you and you shall be rebuilt. I like the word rebuild. Everybody say rebuild. Okay, all virgin of Israel, referring to each one of us, you shall again be adorned with your tambourine. The joy that you have lost, the gladness that you have lost, the delight that you have lost, the Lord will give it back to you. The garment of praise, the oil of joy. Come on, everybody say amen, please. And then he goes on to say, and shall go forth in the dances of those who rejoice. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, somebody say man, please. I entitle this short message before communion, rebuilding, rebuilding our hope. Now, where do you need hope to be rebuilt? The opposite of hopefulness, hopefulness is hopelessness. Are you here with me? Hopelessness. Now, hopelessness is one of the worst emotions to go through. Are you here with me? Living a life without purpose. Living a life without direction. Living a life without recognizing the good destiny that God has for you. Are you here with me? Can somebody say man, please? A man who lives without hope is a man without purpose. Does that make sense? You know, are you here with me? Okay, anything can happen, anything comes, anything goes. That's a callous attitude. Say callous attitude. And hopelessness, as I said, is one of the worst emotions to go through. Now, I'd like to share with you a testimony. This girl, this lady comes to one of our uh, churches, uh, one of our churches in Nepal. I think it is... Uh, uh, Golkana, Golkana, okay, not Bokana, Golkana, okay, and uh, uh, that morning we were ministering, we were ministering, now I had a word of knowledge and I called out, is there anyone, I wanted to demonstrate the power of God, I just called out, is there anyone who has got one side blindness, Pastor, well, you remember that, that was the first one, you know, uh, the pictures are with, uh, with Pastor Eating, and uh, she walks out with great enthusiasm. She walks out. She walks out. That place was so hot. You know, walked out. And uh, so we tested. We tested her eyes. Okay? We closed the good one and we tested the bad one. You know, one, two, three. She, literally, she cannot see. You know, uh, they were counting in Nepal, the interpreter, she cannot see, you know. I think in Hindi is ek, tor, teen, char, I think so, par, and then murku, I think, I'm not sure. <laughs> ek, dor, teen, char, pan, oh, they're Bengali. <laughs> sorry, 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 Vanjavi. Now look at me, please, look at me. So we counted, no, twice. We just want to make sure that she does not come forward for the foreigners to pray for her. We didn't want that to happen. So this happened last week. Okay. Sweating away. It was so stuffy the place. Crowded. You know. And you know what? So we prayed. We prayed. We just laid hands. Pastor Ed, Pastor Ed Young this side. Pastor Boy this side. 
we just laid hands i laid hands and asked the lord what to do you know uh, blind eyes how to pray i'm not sure if the eyes doesn't open the nepalese will close the eyes <laughs> they won't listen to us you know pray and the lord told me son pray that the light of jesus my son will go through Ex- the exact word no i just laid hands and i prayed in the name of jesus let the light of jesus go into this eyes we prayed and then um, then with great apprehension because the crowd is looking at you a few of them are lining up also with blindness okay lining up one side blindness okay and then remove the eyes and we tested you know when we took our, our fingers away from her hand away from her there was such a radiant smile on her face such a radiant smile and then we tested I, I tested one two we start tried moving the finger backward and pastor boy you know pastor boy you know and he also did and you know what she said she is completely healed yeah. now then later i just wanted to verify with this the miracle I asked the pastor for years this lady has been living in one eye hopelessness can you imagine this eyes you cannot see you have to use this eyes to see a neck will be affected right and you can't see at the back of the turn and all kinds of stun you have to put on right doctor all the nerves will get twisted i think you know and uh, you know and 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 she had a hope rebuild can somebody say man please yeah. now what is what is the purpose of this message now, what is the purpose of this message now just before i read the purpose of this message i like to read one more scripture and uh, you could be in that situation too proverbs 13:12 the hopelessness is the bad emotions to be in and you know, proverbs 13:12 says hope deferred hope deferred is what hopelessness you know hope postponed hope deferred makes the heart sick what kind of sickness is this huh could be emotional sickness discouragement despair disappointment whatever but a uh, a dream a desire some version will say desire but some version will say hope but a hopeful feel is a tree of life a tree of life is a total life can somebody say amen please isn't that wonderful so therefore the purpose of this message is jesus is a hope not giver a hope builder what happens to those hope in your life that has become hopeless right now what happens but jesus rebuilds that hope come on somebody say man please jeremiah 29:11 jeremiah 29:11 tells us look at the scripture for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord a plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you what hope everybody say hope hope and a future isn't that wonderful hope is for now future is for then and then let's look at romans 12 and verse 12 romans 12 and verse 12 says what rejoice in hope everybody say rejoice in hope or oh, they don't have i didn't give them rejoice everybody say rejoice in hope now this is what you need to do in your hopelessness rejoice in hope hope in god will never fail can somebody say man please hope in god will never disappoint you romans chapter 5 verse 5 it says rejoice in hope be patient be patient in your hopelessness be patient in your suffering that will come from your hopelessness and it says be fervent in prayer say fervent in prayer Come on somebody say fervent in prayer. Is that wonderful? Come on, is that wonderful? Come on, put your hands together give Jesus the glory. Wow. You know Abraham is a good example. The Bible tells us 
waited for 25 years nothing happened the bible tells us in romans chapter 4 was aid instead of becoming hopeless everybody say hopeless instead of becoming hopeless and subjecting himself to the circumstances and the situation that he was in the absence of god's promise fulfillment the bible tells us hope against hope abraham trusted god and god gave god the glory that by faith that he will become the father of many nations. Come on, somebody say man, please. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, isn't that wonderful? Praise God. Now, how does God, how does, are you at the back with me? At the back, those at the back? Now, how does Jesus rebuild our hope? How does he rebuild? You know, how does he rebuild? Now, this week, to all the pastors and leaders, I sent out a prophetic word of exhortation. And I want to read this to you. Everybody focus your eyes on me. I want to read this to you. You know what it says? God is saying. Everybody say, God is saying. God saying. It's not there. God is saying. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, God is saying. God is saying. Listen to your husband. <laughs> say, Nelson. Okay. okay. Some of you are wearing such a big mask. Cannot... Don't know whether you're saying or not saying. Okay. Now look at me please. God is saying. Take this as a prophetic word. God is saying. Meet me on the mountain. Come on. Say meet me on the mountain. That means meet me alone. And then he goes on to say. If you will start believing. Everybody say believing. If you will start believing again. Everybody say again. Huh? Rebuilding. Very important. If you start believing again, he is going to give you back what you thought was done. What you thought is over. If you will start believing again, he will give back to you what you thought is over. What you thought it is finished. What you thought it's not going to happen. Does it make sense? Come on, does it make sense? And then, what was broken, what you messed up, what you mishandled, God has another chance coming for you. Put your hands together and give Jesus the glory. That's right. That's Jesus allowing Jesus to rebuild your hope. Hallelujah. I've messed up. I've missed it. Doesn't matter. He is wanting to give you another chance. And I call this the chance of grace. Come on, say the chance of grace. I want to turn your attention right now. Just your attention. To explain how Jesus gives us hope. I want to turn your attention to Luke chapter 5 verses 2 through 6. And this account is about a man. Hear this very carefully. This account is about a man who has been broken. Say broken. broken. Everybody say broken. Who has been broken in his hope. Who has been broken in his confidence. Who has been broken in his waiting. He has been broken in his career. He was broken in his expectation. And there hopelessly he was standing. And there Jesus comes. And rebuilds his home. Now let's turn to Luke chapter 5 verses 2 through 6. Jesus. Okay, I'm going to read. Are you still with me? Now, I want to ask you this question. Where do you need Jesus to rebuild your hope? Take a few minutes. And I want you to just pick up one area. Otherwise, this message is not going to be relevant. Okay? Dimana Tuhan Harus build your harapan dimana bena harapan semula where where do you need come on take a few minutes everything is fine with you i want to sit with you and you disciple me please <laughs> huh i really want that okay somehow we have broken hopes in our lives Far too long, this broken hope has brought all kinds of discouragement and disappointment and has taken the authority in our prayer life, the authority in reading the word of God. 
to a point that we begin to think whether this faith that I have in Jesus is real. Are you here with me? Or is it just a religious celebration? Come on, are you here with me? And I want you to know that Jesus is real and why he's real so that he can solve your real problems. Come on, somebody say man, please. Isn't it wonderful? Put your hands together, give Jesus the glory. If you don't have hands, borrow somebody's hand. Praise God. Come on, are you here with me? Look at this, let's read this. Jesus, he Notice two empty boats. Everybody say two empty boats. At the water's edge, two empty boats. Jesus noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, but look at this. He only chose one. Everybody say only one. And for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. While we are waiting for Jesus, we have to wash our nets. Come on, don't throw your nets away. Keep washing. Come on, somebody say amen, please. Now look what Jesus then prophetically chose. He's stepping into one of the boards. Say one of the boards that belongs to Simon. Jesus asked Simon, it's honor to push it out into the water. There were two boards, side by side. There were two. There were two boards side by side. Huh? He didn't step into one of them out of convenience. He stepped into one of them out of destiny. Say destiny. Destiny. Everybody say destiny. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Nobody can stop the progress of God's destiny in your life. Come on. Put your hands together and give Jesus a glory. No sickness, no disease, no circumstances, no people, no finance. Hallelujah. Are you here with me? And he stepped into this one board. And you know what? When he had finished... So he sat in the board and taught the crowds, right? And from there, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, he said to Simon, now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Some fish. Not just one fish. Some fish. Okay? And, and you know what Peter said? Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all night. We worked out all night. We fished all night. Some version will say. And we didn't catch anything. Huh? Like you writing report. Your reporter. All night but no report written in the morning. <laughs> Isn't it frustrating? Okay. <laughs> in your case the... I think they wet your report, remove everything. You know, and if, but if you, and, and you know what? We catch nothing. But if you say, I like the word, if you say, so let, I will let the nets down, and this time the nets were so full of the fish they begin to tag. Come on, somebody say, man, please. Come on, are you here with me? Come on, there are five. Everybody say five. Surely five, surely. Five. <laughs> you're sorry, you're there. I cannot beat you. Yeah. There are five. Everybody say five. There are five ways through which the Lord rebuilds our broken hope. And I want to glean this truth from this story. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. This message is for you if you have a, a displaced hope. This message is for you. Hope deferred makes your heart sick. But the fulfillment of desire is a tree of life. The fulfillment of hope is a tree of life. Come on, put your hands together and give Jesus a glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. I speak to people who have high swan and uh, Visha. Hello. Hello. Come. Check hands. You think it's a strange thing? She's okay. Are you frightened? Okay. I'm not like a priest, you know. 
The son okay. The son goes to church. <laughs> They're my daughter's uh, what maid? Uni maid. Hey, hello. Hi. You know what? Five dynamic ways through which the Lord will rebuild our hope that's broken. Our hope that's broken. Come on, five ways. This message is for you. This message is for you. My hope of reconciliation, my hope of healing, my hope of being restored, my hope of having a happy family has been dashed and I'm living in hopelessness. Are you here with me? Can somebody shout amen please? If I were you, I'll take camera and take a photo of this because the media did that. I didn't do that. All, all praise goes to media. Okay, five ways through which Jesus built our hope. Joyce, Joyce Huang, she did that. <laughs> Joyce Teo now. Number one, look at this. Number one, he rebuilds, he rebuilds our hope through his time and season. His time and season. I just told you, Jesus stepped into Peter's board. There were two boards. But he chose Peter's board. He restores our hope through his time and season. If you're sitting here and you're wondering why your prayer is not answered. Why is it taking such a long time? The problem in your life is real. The reality seems to be so real. But there is such, there is something that God operates in the destiny of your life. And it's called the timing and the season of God. It's not about your faith. It's not about your prayer. It's not about your spirituality. It's about you waiting for God's time to unveil. Come on, put your hands together. Give Jesus glory. While you're waiting, wash your nets. Just like Peter. Don't slumber into discouragement and despair. I fished all night and I caught nothing. And I'm not going to just sit back and be discouraged and throw my net away. But I'm going to wash my net. I'm going to prepare for the next catch. I'm going to wash my net. Usually fishermen wash their net after the catch. When they, saw, when they sell the catch, they come back and wash their net. Probably singing, I sold everything. I sold everything. But here he said, I sold nothing. I sold nothing. And that's the song he was singing. And washing the net. While you're waiting for God's time and season. Wash your net. Do what you've been doing. Keep praying. Keep trusting. Keep working. Keep expecting. Put your hands together. Give Jesus the glory. Come on. Come on. It's about the timing of God. Because God's time is the one that brings forth the seasons of God in your life. Nothing else. It's not your spirituality. It's not how much the scripture you know. No, it's God's time. Every one of our life hinges on the timing of God. And I want you to know, God is never one minute early or one minute late. He's right on time. He's right on time. Don't you never say right on time. It may not be your timing. It may not be the timing of your family. It may not be the timing of your hastiness. But God's time is the best time. That's why the Bible tells us. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11. Look at that. It says here. Look at the screen. He has made everything beautiful. Hopelessness is ugly. Despair is ugly. And he said he has made everything beautiful in its time also, he has put eternity. Everybody say eternity. You know what's eternity? Come on. You know what's eternity? Huh? You know what eternity is? Time factor. Time factor. Eternity. In their hearts. Everybody has got a time ticking inside. When to get married. So don't be anxious. Puyao. Hai pa. Puyao. Tang sin. Puyao. Yuli. For those Chinese who are not married. For the Indians, for the Basa Malaysia, Jangan Kamu Quater, Masa Tuhan, Akan Sampai, Tatap, 
Tida, I can delay. Everybody put your hands together. Give Jesus a glory. <laughs> he has made everything beautiful in its time. It's much better than the Swiss watch. Okay? And also he has made eternity in their hearts. Except that no man can find out the work that God does from the beginning to the end. You can find out if you learn to wait upon God. Waiting time is God's working time. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. He rebuilds our hope through his time and season. His time and season. Anybody can pass you by. Anything can pass you by. Any opportunity can pass you by. But he who is faithful and he who stays focused on Jesus, the time and season of God will not pass you by. You will not be plucking rambutan during Dorian season. You'll be plucking the trees, leaves. Come on, somebody say amen, please. You know, waiting is so vital. I always thought this to the church. Your waiting time is not a waste of time. Your waiting time is not a wasting away time. Your waiting time is God's working time. Come on. Everybody say this. My waiting time. It's my running away time. No, no, no. <laughs> my waiting time is God's working time. Hallelujah. Say it, man. Come on. Isaiah 40, 31 says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they will mount up with wings, not like crow. Ah, ah, mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Come on. Isn't that wonderful? Number two. Very quickly, time running after us. Number two. Number two, I got some more scriptures, but I think, how many of you are waiting? Just wave your hand, please. I'm waiting. If you don't have a hand, wave your leg. <laughs> Come on, seriously, how many of you are waiting? Come on. Okay, right, majority. Sometimes waiting is a transitional time, and waiting is painful. Painful. Why painful? You know why? Not that somebody injecting you with some medicine. But you know what? It is so uncertain. Now let me give you an example. Psalms 40 verses 1 and 2. You know what David said? I waited patiently for the Lord. You know while he was waiting patiently for the, for the Lord? You know what the next verse says? He is found in, the, in what? In, in a horrible pit and a mighty clay. He is found in a horrible pit and a mighty clay describing his circumstances and situation. And he's waiting. And some Saul is waiting to kill him. His son has deceived him. Half the people are not for him. And he's waiting. Huh? Waiting. Waiting looks like foolishness. But the scripture says, I waited patiently for the Lord. It was one. Was one. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he, look at this, and he inclined to me his time and season. He inclined claimed to me and hurt my appeal, hurt my cry and he brought me out of the horrible pit and the miry clay and placed my feet upon the solid rock and established my feet. Plan upon plan, purpose upon purpose he established my feet and those who heard, those who heard uh, those who established my step and those who, come on, give me the third verse and those who, those who, what come on and and he, has, and he has put a new song in my mouth. Huh? Yeah, what is a new song? Waiting time is God's working time. Wait, waiting time is God's working time. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust the Lord. Put your hands together and give Jesus a glory. And I tell you, all of you put up your hand. God is honored in your waiting. Huh? He's honored. He's honored. He's very much honored when he sees his children waiting for him. Glory to God. Isn't it wonderful? Okay, let's move on. Number two. He rebuilds. I like this. Number two. He rebuilds our hope through his loving kindness. Everybody say loving kindness. Hallelujah. 
He rebuilds our hope through his loving kindness. And you know what the scripture tells us here? Now go out where it is deeper and let your nets down. Look at me. I want to explain this to you. Keep this on the screen. You know what? What does it mean? You know, Jesus was under tremendous pressure. People were wanting to hear him. And he had to get to the board and go to the other side uh, and to preach. And you know what? After preaching, you know, he comes and steps into and comes to Peter. Now, nobody told, Catherine, you must know this. Nobody told Jesus that Peter fished all night and caught nothing. Nobody said. Nobody said this to him. Nobody. You know, uh, sorry, they worked all night and caught nothing. That's a scripture. Nobody told him. And you know what? The Bible tells us in Psalms 139 verse 1. Look at this. Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. Known me. In other words, everybody look at me. In other words, if you feel left out and you feel that God has forgotten you. And I want you to know, even before you open your mouth and tell him your dire needs, he already knows that you have this needs. Are you here with me? He knows the conflicts in your heart. He knows the struggles that you're going through. He knows the frustration that you're going through. Even before you open your mouth to speak to him. Because the Bible tells us he is omniscient. The word omniscient means he knows all things. And what more about you? What more? Silently struggling in some of the battles of life in your life. Some of the things uh, silently you're struggling and you don't seem to have a way out. Day in and out. This is a battle that's raging. This is a conflict that you're fighting. This is a contention that you're going through. This is a frustration that you're going through. Don't sit there and think that you have to open your mouth and pray. Of course, prayer speaks about faith. But I, I want, to, want you to know, he knows what you're going through even before you open your mouth. Come on. Somebody say amen, please. Put your hands together. Give Jesus the glory. And that's what happened to Peter. He knew that Peter was broken in confidence. He was broken in his career. He was broken in his hope. And he stepped into his boat intentionally to provide the destiny, the tree of life for Peter. Glory to God. Let the enemy come and, and rob the life and the plan that God has for him through discouragement and despair. Are you here with me? Come on, somebody say amen, please. You like that? Come on, do you like that? While you're sitting here, Masha, and you're thinking, nobody understands me. Nobody understands me. That's a lie of the devil. Because Nelson may not understand. And uh, Asher may not understand. But there is one who created you, who knows you, and searches you, and understands everything that you go through. Put your hands together. Thank you. Jesus the glory. Hallelujah. That's a confidence. Come on, say that's a confidence. That's a confidence. And I want you to live with this hope. You know, someday Jesus will cross your path. Someday, all night it took Peter. I don't know whether it would take all week, I'm not sure. All month, I'm not sure. All year, I'm not sure. But someday Jesus will cross your path. When Jesus crosses your path, everything will be not upside down. Everything will be totally right. Come on. Isn't that wonderful? Come on. Put your hands together. Give Jesus the glory. 6.30 already. Okay. Number three. Number three. Does that make sense? Okay. Must ask my wife, no? Number three, number three, he rebuilds, look at this. He rebuilds our hope through his voice. Come on, everybody say voice. He rebuilds our hope through his voice. And he tells Peter, now go out where it is deeper. Go out, go out where it's deeper, he said. All the fishes don't want to come near you because your net is stinking. So go deeper. Maybe that could be the reason. Go deeper, huh? Martin. Go deeper, Martin, Martin, and let your nets down. Just one voice of God, your entire life will change. And I want you to know that God wants to speak to you. 
And we in our hopelessness, we're waiting for God to speak to our audible voice. No, God can speak to you in your pain. God can speak to you in your discouragement. God can speak to you in your desert experience. God can speak to you in your wilderness. God can speak to you in your temptation. God can speak to you in your failure. God can speak to you through the challenges that you're going through. Put your hands together, give Jesus the glory. Get this mindset out. I have to come in shape and come to church, worship two, three songs and listen to the message and God will speak to me. Lie! Lie! The Bible tells all that is good of course. Please come to church. All that is good. <laughs> but the Bible tells us in Hebrew chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, do not harden your heart for today. Not tomorrow, but today the Lord will speak to you. Hallelujah. Your pain can speak to you. Are you here with me? Your pain. What, what is happening? Huh? Ordering your dinner online. Okay? <laughs> now look at me, please. Huh? You're asking your mommy whether this one or that one. Okay, look at me, please. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, somebody say amen, please. In his hopelessness, when all hope is gone and the day is setting on him and God comes and tells him, Nelson, cast the net into the deep. That's God. Everybody say, that's God. Hebrew 10, 27 tells us. Hebrew 10, 27 tells us. Hebrew 10, 27 tells us. For my ship will hear my voice. My ship hear my voice. My ship hear my voice. Not will hear, hear my voice. He's always wanting to speak to you. Always, surely, always. You're so caught up with your transport confusion. You just wait, God will speak to you. Yeah, don't say okay me, you just do. Okay? <laughs> After okay, then do something else. One time me or later. <laughs> Okay, look at this. My ship, hear my voice. I know them. I know them. I know them. He knows you. Look at that. He knows you. He knows you. And they will follow me. Come on, somebody say amen, please. Well, I'm going to close right now. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, isn't that wonderful? I, I just give you an example. Can I give you an example? Everybody, are you still with me? If you're with me, just wave your hands, please. If you're not with me, don't wave your hand. Okay, now you know what? This lady, example of hearing the voice, this lady... In Mark the 12th chapter, Mark the, I said Mark the 5th chapter, everybody look at me. Mark the 5th chapter in verse 28, 12 years, everybody say 12 years. I want to deal with this hopelessness. 12 years, 12 years, she was in, in hopelessness. She was in despair. She lost her confidence. She lost everything, blood issue. And then she heard that Jesus is coming. And she allowed, she, look at this, she allowed her sickness to speak to her. You know what she said? She said this before she touched Jesus. You know what she said? If only I can touch Jesus. She allowed her infirmity to speak to her. Who will have that kind of a faith, doctor? 12 years. I'm desperate in this 12 years. I'm consulting doctors after doctors. I'm familiar with consultation. I'm not familiar with hearing a voice. And she, she responded to the prompting inside. A prompting of faith. I call this Dorothy. Huh? You know what? The prompting was, if I touch his garment, I'll be healed. She allowed a pain to speak to her. Huh? Hello? She allowed her pain to speak to her. She did not allow her pain to overcome her. She allowed her infirmity to speak to her. And the pain did not bring her to hopelessness, but brought her to a place where it will speak out and give her the prompting to go and touch the garment of Jesus. And the minute she touched the garment of Jesus, life flew out of Jesus and got a heal. Glory to God. Put your hands together. Give Jesus a glory. Isn't that wonderful? Church, isn't that wonderful? Number one, the Lord 
rebuilds your hopelessness through his time and season. Number two, he rebuilds our hopelessness through his loving kindness. He knows, Paul, you don't need to fight the battle. He's fighting for you. Stop fighting the battle. The, the minute you stop fighting the battle, you become more than a conqueror. You get what you have been praying for. Number three, he rebuilds our hope through what? Through his, his voice. Logos becomes rhema. Rhema becomes revelation. And revelation becomes revomacy. Hey, sorry, sorry. Low on, tut up, low on. Nisra Salah. Okay. Number what? Number four. That's right. He rebuilds. I'm going to go quickly because time is running. I'm, I know I'm going to serve communion. Please forgive me. He rebuilds our hope through our obedience. He rebuilds our hope through obedience. You know, Peter, you know what Peter said? We fished all night. We caught nothing. And you want us to go back to the same water, the same net, the same boat, the same fisherman. Sounds so oxy, oxymoron. Sounds so foolish. Nevertheless, at your word, I'll cast the net down. Obedience. Everybody say obedience. You can convert your hopelessness through obedience. When obedience kicks in, what happens? Faith begins to work. Can somebody say man, please? Come on, somebody shout amen, please. Listen to God. Listen to God. Sometimes our hopelessness can be because of our own disobedience. Joshua. It can be our own disobedience. Rajan. Could be our own disobedience. Listen to God. Listen to God. When we obey like Peter obeyed, what happens? He had a breakthrough. Say faith breakthrough. Come on, everybody say faith breakthrough. Obedience convert your hopelessness into faith endeavor. When faith begins to happen, I tell you, miracles begin to happen. Glory to God. You know, but the Bible tells us in Isaiah 119. Look at Isaiah 119. If you are willing, say willing. If you are willing, if you are willing and obedient, willing. Obedience cannot be reluctant. Obedience cannot be delayed. Obedience cannot be duty bound. Obedience cannot be obligation. Obedience has to be willing. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Put your hands together. Give Jesus the glory. What's your name? I forgot. Priya. 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 I'm going to do this because my parents asked me to do. I'm going to read the Bible because my parents asked. My grandfather told me. My grandmother told me. That kind of obedience is not going to give you any benefit. It has to be willing obedience. Have you been a good girl? A boy is disturbing you? Okay, tell me. They're all so young. Now they have grown up. Okay. Any boys in the church disturbing you? Tell Derek, no? He's a policeman. He's a policeman. He's actually was a lance corporal, became a sergeant now. <laughs> Promoted to <laughs> Okay, finally, number four. Time running after us. Oh, number five. Okay, sorry. Number five. Okay, I'm going to finish this. He rebuilds our hope through his bountiful blessings. None of the children of God can be spoiled by the blessing of God. Don't be intimidated by the blessings of God. You know what happened? And this time, the Bible tells us their nets were so full of fish, they begin to tear. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, is that wonderful? Come on, is that wonderful? When you come on, put your hands together, give Jesus the glory. Hallelujah. The Lord had to allow this hopelessness to happen in Peter's life so that he can come to a place where he can reap the bountiful blessings of God. Come on, come on. That's why the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 9, 8. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God is able. You are not able. Turn to your neighbor. I'm not able. I'm glad you're not able. Okay, otherwise you'll become Mr. Able or Miss Able. Okay, 
You know, it says, and God is able to make all grace, all grace, favor, unmerited favor to the ill-deserving and the undeserving. And it says, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency, chukob, 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 in all things that you may have an abundance for every good work. Can you put your hands together, give Jesus glory. Come on. Come on, can you, in conclusion, will you allow God to rebuild your hope? Stand to your feet, please. Come on, hallelujah. The worship team, can you come tomorrow morning? Come on. <laughs> Just give me five minutes. All right, guys. Is it all right? Nelson, is it okay, Nelson? Okay. Come on, let's just worship the Lord. And after that, serve communion. Then you can go back. Isn't that wonderful? I want you to go back with hope in your heart. That's the purpose of this message. I want, to go, want you to go back with hope in your heart. And leave all your hopelessness behind. And later we will sweep it out. We get the workers to sweep this out. Let, let's allow God to rebuild our hope. Let's allow God to rebuild our hopes. What do we need to do? Keep washing your net. Asher, keep washing your net. You know what washing the net means? Do what you're supposed to do and God will do what he's supposed to do. Young man, keep trusting God. Keep reading the word. Keep praying. Keep washing your net. Everybody say, keep washing your net. Lift your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Shada Rabba Sidianta Rabba Sanda. He Kanda Laba Sada Rada Rabba Sanda. Shidianta Rabba Sada Rabba Sanda. Rata Sata Rata Sata Shada Rada Rada Rabba Sanda. Jesus is a hope builder. He's a hope rebuilder. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. So good. Come on, reach out to him. You're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good. Sing it again. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. Can we declare it one voice? God, you're so cup and the bread in your hands, why don't you unpack the communion cup even as we partake this communion as a family this evening. If you are done unpacking your communion, 
why don't you just lift up your communion and your emblem and let's just pray for our emblem father we thank you that this afternoon this evening we can come together as a family to partake of your body and your blood jesus whatever hopelessness that we are in jesus lord we know that even as we put our trust we put our faith we put our hope in you lord hope will be restored in us lord jesus and we just surrender our life into your hands knowing that god you are indeed a good god you will come true for us Lord so we bless the emblem father even as we partake as a family in Jesus mighty name we pray amen in 1st Corinthians 11 chapter verse 23 onwards on the night when Jesus was betrayed after he had given thanks he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said this bread signifies my broken body as often as you eat this bread do this in remembrance of me as a family of God Let's partake of the bread together. Likewise, after supper, he looked at his disciples and said, This cup signifies the new covenant that I've made through my blood. As often as you drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me. As a family, let's partake of the cup together. Why don't you put your cups down and why don't you lift up your hands towards heaven and let's pray. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the word, Lord Father. We know, Lord Father, regardless of the situations we are in, God, we can always put our trust and our hope in you, knowing that, God, you are a good God. You will be good to us and we will see your goodness manifested in every areas of our life. Father, I declare this over your people, even as they leave from this place, they are highly favoured, they are deeply love and they're tremendously blessed even as they go through this week lord father let them find hope in every situation let them experience your presence and lord you will reveal to them lord more of you lord jesus throughout this week bless them lord in jesus mighty name and everyone say amen amen god bless you church with this the service is over if you need a prayer you can come forward and our pastors and leaders will be ready to pray with god bless you see you again